If you're like me, one of the main reasons you stay interested in precision long range shooting is to continually challenge yourself and to take your game to the next level. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm here at the Ultimate Reloader Ridgetop 100 yard shooting range. And this concrete bench, which is the subject of this video, has enabled me to take my game to the next level. Because when I think about precision rifle, and granted, I'm an engineer, I'm pretty analytical. I think about it from the perspective of isolating and minimizing variables, different variables that affect the precision, the accuracy of your shooting. You need to be on target, you need to maintain small groups. And what I do on the channel quite frequently is test and evaluate rifles that I'm building, rifles that are from OEMs off the shelf, and I'm also testing factory and hand-loaded ammunition. I wanna take myself as a shooter out of the equation as much as possible when I'm doing these stories. So I decided one of my highest priorities was to build a very stable shooting support. That's one of the key variables in precision long range shooting is the support. Whether it be a bipod that you're shooting off of, whether it be a bench rest style rest that you're shooting off of, whether it be a barricade that you're shooting off of. That support system is a key part of the equation that's gonna affect where the shots land on target. So I did a bunch of research. I went to the shooters forum over at accurateshooter.com. I did a bunch of Googling to see what are people putting in place for shooting benches at shooting ranges? Which types of benches do they use for competition? And I was looking at, do I build a steel frame bench with a wood top that I could move around. And I decided at the end of the day, what I wanted was something that was very massive, that was very stable, that would be the perfect support system for a bench rest style, mechanical front rest, and a fixed rear bag. And what's been awesome about this is after completing this bench, I've gotten some of the best results I've ever gotten because my shooting support has always been a variable that has influenced the outcome of my testing. Much less so now. So what I wanna do is walk through what I researched for this bench, how I came up with this design. This whole bench is pretty much a prototype. It's a six foot by six foot pad with a concrete bench. I've got cinder blocks as the support for the bench top. It's very solid, it's very heavy, and it works really well. But there's some things I would do differently if I were to do it again. So when I did my research, there were a couple key things that I was looking at. I was looking at things like, what's the height off the ground? And what is the contour of the top? You'll see trapezoid shapes, you'll see shapes with dual cutouts, you'll sh see shapes like this with one cutout. And I looked at a lot of things, I looked at where am I gonna be shooting with this? I have a 100 yard range down the primary direction here, but I also have an array of steel targets off to the side. So I wanted to prioritize the 150 yard range. I just added the 50 yard range primarily for rimfire testing, but also to be able to use it, you know, to shoot from different directions, but maybe with less ergonomic friendliness. So I put the muzzle area, if you think of a rifle sitting here on the bench, exactly 100 yards from my backstop. I created a level pad and I poured a six foot by six foot by three inch thick concrete slab. I'm up here at the top of the mountain. I have to haul everything up here with my side by side. That includes the water, that includes the concrete, that includes the tools. So if I was doing it down on the bottom of the hill with my concrete mixer, I probably would have done three and a half or four inches, something like that. But that wasn't really the point here. The point is it's not on the dirt and I have a very solid level and stable surface upon which to build this concrete bench. And I started again with this slab, but then on top of that, I had to calculate if I want to use cinder blocks, cinder blocks are modular, they're portable, they're heavy and very stable when they're put in place. I felt like that was a great solution for this mountaintop range where I had to bring everything up and where concrete work is very difficult. 
Now, I am no bricklayer, and I learned that as a process of this building exercise. I looked up a couple YouTube videos. Of course, those guys make it look really easy. You guys have told me that about some of the stuff that I do on my channel. Uh, and one of the mistakes I made was I went to Home Depot and I got the wrong kind of mortar. I got mortar repair. It's all they had. It set up really fast. It was very difficult. It was sloppy. Uh, I'm not proud of the craftsmanship there. It was a real learning process. But I got the job done. And I had to calculate what height do I want for this tabletop. You know, 34 inches is, is about right. 36 inches. I'm a little under that. And if you want all of the details and plans, you just click through to that first link in the video description. I'll have all the dimensions there. So I'm a couple of inches under that because I had to take a stack essentially of three 8x8x16 eight by eight by cinder blocks and then raise that just a little bit, not eight inches, not even close to it. So I took two of the one and three quarter inch paver sections here and stacked those on top of each other. So I've got three courses of eight by eight by 16 cinder block and then two layers of the one and three quarter inch eight by 16 pavers. And that netted out about the right height, but again, it was a bit messy getting everything put together. The pavers don't split in half very well for the bricking process and so on and so forth, but it worked. So if you wanna use this overall strategy and this overall bill of materials, I, I wouldn't say you shouldn't. It's just know that it can be a little bit frustrating at first to make sure that uh, everything is gonna sit level and is gonna look somewhat elegant when you're done. So that all you know, went pretty well and was pretty straightforward. For the top, I chose to take some inspiration from those folks that are doing concrete countertops. And instead of using rebar or remesh, I did a bit of research, rebar is way over scale for a three inch top. That's what this is, it's about a three inch top. Remesh can work, but there, you have to, basically, structurally, you want it close to the top and you want it close to the bottom surface without it coming through. Because the top is in compression and the bottom is in tension if you think of a, a beam with a load in the middle. So you don't want it in the middle, you don't want oversized material. I decided to go with fiber reinforced concrete, which is just a little bit more expensive than regular concrete. It's got, I believe it's fiberglass fibers in the concrete and that dramatically increases the stress. It gives it strength when it's under tension. Concrete has almost no strength under tension, but has tremendous strength under compression. So I built a form and for the bottom of the form, I used melamine three quarter inch particle board. And I wanted to do that so that I would have a nice smooth surface on the top. I did some work on the table saw. I cut essentially what looks like some chamfered moldings for all around the edge to chamfer the edges of the concrete. Got the fiber reinforced concrete. I was doing this down by the shop. So I had my concrete mixer that made life a lot easier. And I did the pour. And for maximum strength, concrete looks pretty dry when you pour it. But without special equipment to get this kind of a surface, you're gonna probably wanna set it a little bit wet compared to that maximum strength composition. So I tried to manage the trade-offs there and I tried to get you know the air pockets out where I could. Turned out really nice in the middle, a little bit of pockets on the edges. Doesn't really matter a whole lot. It's still a good surface to work with. I let that set up for about five days and I didn't have help with me, so I hauled it up the hill on a four by eight utility trailer and I used some ramps to get it up on top of the base here, the support for this top. And then there was a moment of slight calamity. I had the whole thing blocked up so that I could put mortar under it. Again, I would have liked to have had four or five guys here to help set it down on some mortar but I didn't have that. I didn't want to drive the backhoe all the way up and use straps because that would probably just make it harder. So my two by fours fell over a little bit when I was positioning the top and the top slammed down and I got a nice crack right here. And so what I had to do was I had to jack up the corner 
to bring the crack together and to shove the mortar in from underneath. Not elegant, not saying this is the right way to do it. But it did set in place and it's strong and it's stable and it's really just a, a cosmetic problem. So how to best do that the second time, I'm still thinking about that. If you guys have ideas, please drop a comment and we'll discuss that. This was a lot of work. Uh, the total bill of materials, I'll, I'll point you to the article, if you read the full bill of materials, uh, came in at $248 approximately without tax. So for less than $300, I have a six foot by six foot slab and I have a totally killer concrete bench. Now, for all you lefties out there, <laughs> I did, this is, this is just a decision I had to make. You want a cutout on either side so that a right-handed shooter can stand on one side and shoot off of one side, and a lefty can shoot off of the other side. I chose not to make that other cutout so that I could set a secondary rifle over there so that I had more room for my chronograph box and my ammunition and all that. You could still shoot lefty off of this bench. It's just not gonna be nearly as elegant. Uh, and in terms of the results, the six dasher rifle that I just built was an absolute labor of love and a labor of perfection. And when it came time to do the load development, I had one group where everything was perfect and five shots went into, it was, it was in the zeros, right? So less than a tenth of an inch group center to center for five shots. It was about 0 0.090. I don't think I would have gotten that result if I was shooting off of a bipod with a rear bag or shooting prone on the ground with a bipod and a rear bag or shooting off of the picnic table I used to use for this testing. So this has indeed made a huge difference. Plus, it's a very pleasant way to conduct the research. I've got space here. I've been shooting with my chronograph. I'm looking at standard deviation and I'm looking at group size. This is a really great way to shoot when you really want to isolate the ammunition and the rifle from all of the other factors. So I'm very happy with this. Now, as a follow-up, you can probably hear it's pretty windy up here. I just put in place a third, I guess, 100-yard range here on the Ultimate Reloader Ranch property. It's down further in the trees. It's a bit more protected and I should therefore have less issues with wind. Remember, five miles per hour of wind at 100 yards can increase your group size a half inch. Depends on the ballistic coefficient, the bullet, and so on and so forth. Up here, I see gusts of 10 to 15 miles per hour quite frequently. So the point is, I'm gonna go through an exercise similar to this again, but I'm actually thinking for my next bench to make that portable bench, probably two inches thick on top with uh, laminated plywood sheets together, three quarter inch or one and a quarter flooring plywood, something like that. Maybe two inch pipe at angles. Maybe I'll weld up a, a base for it. But to have something that's movable, that way I can bring it up here and have two benches to shoot off of. To be able to shoot at a bench to 700 that way or a thousand the other way. And then I will follow that up later with a second iteration of this concrete shooting bench because this is really what I want when I'm doing that type of precise shooting, testing, evaluation, producing data and analytics that you all are gonna to use to make decisions about what cartridge, what rifle, and so on and so forth. So at the end of the day, uh, this is a prototype. It did not go perfectly by any stretch of the imagination, but I achieved the goal and at a really reasonable budget. My question for you in closing is, what do you think of this bench? And did you build a bench yourself? What did you do and why? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Now, make sure you're subscribed with notifications because I've got a lot more related testing, evaluation, even some bench rest content coming up. That's right. I'm letting my OCD run rampant and run wild. I'm leaning into it. I'm really, really loving this type of shooting and this type of content. So stick around, check out those stories that are going to be coming on the channel. Uh, don't forget, uh, I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'm on Patreon. I got that full article with the plans for you all. 
Links in the video description. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.